Hello, this is Patrick, and welcome to some more Tesla news. Really exciting stuff. Full self-driving looks like it's actually going to be legal this year, at least in Wyoming. More details in a minute, but first off, Elon has tweeted out that Advanced Summon has gotten regulatory approval, and this enables cars to drive to the location of their owner's phone. It also allows to follow drivers like a pet, or be controlled like an RC car. So this is a feature that's been touted for a couple of years now and has yet to come out. There should be people getting it in the early access program. Hopefully there'll be some videos. If I get it, I will definitely be posting some videos really soon. It's also been leaked this diagram of Tesla 3.0 hardware for full self-driving. So this is the GPU that is currently in NVIDIA and Autopilot 2.0. And Elon's saying that the current processors in Tesla Model 3s can do about 200 frames per second. So if you think about it, the cameras around the Tesla, there's a bunch of them, you get to divide it up over the number of cameras, and you're, you're actually getting a pretty choppy frame rate if you divide them all up by 200. And the new hardware will, will allow for 2,000 frames per second. So, you know, much smoother motion, a lot more data to analyze needed for the neural nets on the full self-driving, and it's also able to do that with redundancy. This is what's needed to get full self-driving working up to the regulatory status that's being proposed, I believe, if, if you look at this bill that uh, Wyoming's proposing. So it costs between $3,000 and $5,000 to add the full self-driving package to a Tesla. Like when I got mine, it was $3,000 at the time of order. Uh, they raised it a little bit after that. And then if you wanted to get it after the fact, most recently it was $5,000. More recently, they just took it off the menu. You can't order it when you're ordering a car. And from what I was told, you still can't get it added at this point to a car. Um, this is what I was told in Denver, Colorado, at the Cherry Creek Mall. Now, maybe if you talk to the right person, they can still add it. I don't know. But you're you're best off you know, waiting until it's, it's, it's actually out to buy it. And who knows what it's going to cost at that point in time. Or buying a used vehicle that has the full self-driving package already enabled. It's just going to be a simple swap out of the computer inside current Teslas like mine. The big news that I, that I saw on the Tesla Motor Club's forum was that in Wyoming, there's a house bill, 226. It says very clearly that an automated motor vehicle may operate in the state with the automated driving system engaged, regardless of whether a human driver is physically present in the vehicle. Now, this looks pretty clear to me that this is full self-driving being legal. Uh, there's a it's a pretty long document if you want to look at it in the notes below. And it it looks a little scary because like the person who owns the vehicle is responsible for what the vehicle does, not the manufacturer. So if there's a if you send your car to go search around the parking lot to park and it runs somebody over, you know, you would be at fault, not Tesla or whoever the manufacturer of this autonomous vehicle is, or if, you know, it hits somebody on the road or something like that. And that, that's a little bit worrisome. I think Volvo was saying that they would be responsible if it's in an autonomous mode on their systems. Tesla's always said that the driver's in control. Now, this bill is set to be passed by July and of this year. So that means if the full self-driving hardware is coming out in a few months and Usually Tesla puts out their new firmwares in the fall and it's going to be legal in the summer. We could have some full self-driving for real this year. It's not a pipe dream anymore. And that's got me pretty, pretty excited. <laughs> now, I don't expect to be sleeping in the back seat, you know, on a trip for Thanksgiving. But I do expect, you know... Intersections, stop lines, stop sites, in, uh, signs in town. It's probably going to work like regular autopilot for validation purposes for, I'd imagine, another year, maybe a couple. Um, just because the neural nets need to become more advanced and account for all these edge cases. So you're still going to have to pretty much have your hands on the wheel and pay attention. But it will pretty much just be driving itself for um, all intents and purposes. And I would highly suspect that that cross-country full self-drive is coming soon, probably when the weather warms up. 
anyways, uh, yeah, that's just, I had to make this video. I saw this news last night. Um, I posted it on Reddit and I, a few other places and nobody's as excited about it as me. Are you guys? I mean, I haven't seen these kind of laws anywhere else before. And I want to go talk to our, our representatives about it and show them the Tesla and what it's already currently capable of. Um, I have with one already. So I don't know if there's anything else that needs to be changed. I want to suggest that if you guys have any suggestions, this could be a model for other states to follow. And I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe, maybe other states have already done this. If you know of that, let me know below. It's, it's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, one last thing that I saw pop up this morning was that Tesla's range estimation internally has been updated to account for elevations and weather. And I think it's always accounted for the ambient temperature of the weather, but now it's accounting for elevations better. I thought it always done that before, but apparently not. So now it'll say, you know, when you're going between superchargers and there's, there's large hills and stuff, it'll account for it a little bit better. I, I don't know. Maybe this isn't really news. I, I thought it was supposed to do that, but this electric article says it's new. So we'll have to test it out. Um, looks like somebody else already has, and it is improved, so it's a little bit more accurate on how much you need to charge between superchargers and hilly areas. And one last thing is the Model 3 RFID chip. I saw this cool little video on what's inside. It's actually You can actually just take it out. So you can buy these cards for $3 at your Tesla service center and you can cut out the little chip and you can put it on a ring or people are talking about embedding it in their hand um <laughs> you can make your own little fob however you want with just the little chip it could be an interesting project i've been watching reviews of the fob for the model 3 and because it doesn't allow for passive entry people are pretty disappointed so i don't think it's worth it at this point in time it allows you to treat it like a normal car where you can lock and unlock the the car and start it with the fob, but you can't just walk up to it and get in and start driving. You still got to treat it basically like the key um, currently. So we'll, we'll see if they do updates to the hardware or the firmware, or uh, unfortunately, maybe the hardware newer versions of Model 3s. Thank you guys so much for watching and me just blabbering on about Tesla. Uh, I love Tesla so much. <laughs> It's just really cool what they're doing for the future and all the technology that's involved. If you don't already have a Tesla and you're looking at getting one, the referral program is ending February 1st. And if I'm of any use to you, please use my referral code below and you'll get free supercharging for six months. This ends February 1st. Thank you guys so much. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.